On October 3rd, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine submitted a petition to the Food and Drug Administration asking that cheese manufacturers be required to display a cancer warning on all dairy cheese products. So should you add cheese to your cancer panic list? This is Healthcare Triage News. Of course the answer is no. If you have a cancer panic list, keep the cigarettes and tanning beds on there and move the cheese to the list of delicious things you like to eat. The press release announcing this anti-cheese petition points to a study reporting a 49% increase in breast cancer mortality among women diagnosed with breast cancer who reported eating one or more daily servings of high-fat dairy products. Is anyone relatively certain that those aren't the absolute risks? That study was published in 2013 and examined dairy intake in women following diagnosis with early stage invasive breast cancer. While it reported no association between overall dairy intake and health outcomes, it found the consumption of high fat dairy was positively correlated with breast cancer mortality. It also reported a positive correlation between this type of dairy and overall mortality, including non-breast cancer mortality, but no significant correlation with breast cancer recurrence, so make of that what you will while I cover the usual complaints. Diet was assessed once at baseline and then once again six years later. Tell me, honestly, if I asked you right now to give me a list of your dairy intake for the last six years, including specific serving sizes categorized by fat content, how accurate do you think that list would be? And beyond that anecdote, we actually have data on how terribly unreliable memories are. They simply don't line up with reality that often. This makes self-reports, especially over long periods of time, pretty terrible generators of reliable data. I mean, I remember being adequate at basketball at summer camp for many years, but my brother assures me that was absolutely not the case. Also, the number of variables that needed to be controlled for in this study are the usual amount of ridiculousness in a study that wasn't designed to answer a specific question. We've got education level, smoking status, menopausal status, body mass index, physical activity levels, disease severity, type of treatment, intake of other foods and nutrients, including red meat, fruit, and fiber, alcohol, the list goes on. As we've said before, statistical testing simply doesn't stretch enough to account for this number of variables without a huge likelihood that the results can be simply noise. That's why it's so important to have a previously determined hypothesis around which you can create an experiment that controls for as many of these variables as possible from the beginning beginning, but I digress. Another study published in 2017 reported a marginally significant increase in breast cancer risk associated with higher intake of American cheddar and cream cheeses, but not low fat cheeses. It also found a significant reduction in breast cancer associated with higher intake of yogurt and sweet dairy like ice cream. In addition, it highlighted in the abstract that overall dairy intake was associated with 15% reduction in breast cancer, which is in contrast to the study we just discussed, but it's hard to compare given that this reduction wasn't even statistically significant. And of course, the usual complaints about food surveys and statistical variables apply. I know we've been on a nutritional study kick lately, but it's hard not to be when studies like this are trending online. Few articles delve into the details and few readers have the time to do it themselves. This leads people to make food choices they wouldn't otherwise make based on faulty headlines derived from shaky studies. If cheese is your thing, we just want you to be able to enjoy it until there's a solid reason not to. And if that day comes, we'll be the first to admit it. Of course, moderation still applies, but you know that. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this other episode on breast cancer and birth control. Also, we'd like to ask you to consider supporting the show by going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage. Our research associate Joe Sevitz does, and so does our Surgeon Admiral Sam, and they, like you, can help make the show bigger and better.